Factoring is <clears throat> always taught in the same way. The very first kind of factoring you do is usually with numbers, like the number six. Well, except it's the wrong thing. The number six and 42. Now I think 42 equals six times seven, doesn't it? I think it does. Um, so since, oh, oh, this would be better. Oh, this would be better. Never mind. Forget the six. We're going to go for 12. OK, now 12 equals six times two and 42 equals six times seven. The greatest common factor, the GCF of 12 and 42 is six. There are other common factors of 12 and 42. Um, there's one other common factor, another common factor. Common means of both. Another common factor. Is two because two goes into 12, two goes into 42. That's a common factor, but the very biggest common factor that's common to both of them is the number six. Well, that's what factoring by GCF is. Here I have two terms. This is a polynomial, bringing back the, uh, the little crash course you had in polynomials. Um, this is a quadratic binomial. And we're going to factor this by GCF. Factor is take a part into terms that you can multiply together to get 6a squared plus 2a. And so what we're going to do is take apart both of these terms. Let's see, 6 is 2 times 3. So well, I'll do it right underneath. 6a squared is 2 times 3 times a times a. And 2a is, well, 2a. But it's also 2a times 1, right? You can multiply anything by 1 and get the same thing. Now, notice, notice that in both of these terms, both of these terms have a two. And both of these terms have an A. So our GCF, greatest common factor is 2a. Now, here is what we do when we factor out a GCF. There's a form that you use, just like everything in math, there's always a form that you use. You write it like this. You write down the GCF, And then let me copy that plus sign. You write the leftovers. Now that is not a technical mathematical term. That's a Barbara Rademacher term. And I stole that from one of my students many years ago. She was a police officer. I hope she doesn't come after me. Ah, hands up. 
Okay, so 2A is the GCF. And then a handy way to do this is once you've written down the 2A, you can go ahead and mark it out. So it doesn't get in the way of your writing your leftovers. Here are the leftovers. There's a three and an A left over in the first term. And then there's a plus one left over in the second term. Now, the way you check and make sure you answered correctly, or should I write check? I'm gonna write it up here, check. Is this 2A times 3A plus one, I'm going to distribute 2A times 3A and 2A times plus one. And let's see, 2A times 3A is 6A squared and 2A times plus one is plus 2A. And that is what I started with. So that means my answer is right. This, shoo, shoot, all right. Is it two? Yeah. This is my answer right here. 2A times 3A plus one. Here I've got a monomial and I'm multiplying by a binomial. And when I do that multiplication, I get this. So factoring is like going backwards to what did I multiply together to get 6A squared plus 2A. Let's try another one. Here I have a quadratic trinomial. Remember highest power two is quadratic. There are three terms, so this is a quadratic. This will be easier if I write what's really going on here. And remember we talked about Terms in a polynomial are separated by plus signs. Well, I'm going to insert the plus signs kind of temporarily. 2r squared plus negative 2r plus negative 6. Now I know that two goes into two, two goes into negative two, two goes into negative six, piece of cake. So two appears to be the only um, number that's going to be in the uh, GCF because this term has, an R, has two R's actually. This term has one R, but this term has no R so two is going to be the GCF. Now that's pretty obvious, but we have to write these terms in such a way that we have a positive two in each of those terms. So this is not a problem. Oh, he was soaking wet. There's a two. But negative 2r, well, I need a positive 2, not a negative 2. So here's what I'm going to do there. I know that negative 2 also equals negative 1 times positive 2, and then times r. And negative 6, if I need a positive 2, is going to be positive two times negative three. 
Now, I wish I hadn't written that in blue, but I did. So, I'll use my violet color to circle all the positive twos. That's my GCF. There's my GCF, let me write it here. And then parentheses and the leftovers. Okay, um, now that I've written down the two, I'm going to go ahead and cross it out. That just helps me not make a mistake. OK, in the first term, I have R squared as a leftover. And in the second term, I have negative 1 R, just R, negative 1 R, negative 1 times R. And then in the last term, I have a negative, yeah, I have a negative three. Now that's not my answer, I have to clean that up. But I've got my leftovers now. So two times R squared plus minus is going to be a minus one R, which is R. So plus negative one times R is just minus R. And then plus negative three is minus three. And that's our answer right there. This equals this. In other words, how I got two R squared minus two R minus six is I multiplied two times r squared minus r minus 3. And then, of course, the way you check it is you re-multiply. You've got to end up with what you started with if you didn't make a mistake. So 2 times r squared is 2, well, let me write it down here, 2r squared, and 2 times minus r is minus 2r, and 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So that is what we started with. Therefore, this, I might as well do it in red, this is our answer. Let me get rid of that. Okay, I made that too big, but I'm not going to deal with it now. There. So this is what you would put in the answer box. Two parentheses, R squared minus R minus three, parentheses closed. Any discussion about this? about factoring by GCF. We're going to do more. OK. Now here's more factoring by GCF, but, but. We have a situation here. We're going to factor out a negative greatest common factor because whenever the leading coefficient, the number in front of the highest degree term, whenever the leading coefficient is negative, the greatest common factor has to be negative also. And this can be strenuous sometimes, so you have to go slowly and carefully. Okay, 
Now, three goes into six and three goes into 12. Not looking at the signs for a minute, but just making sure I know that. So three will be a fact, negative three. Well, if there weren't a negative there, three would be a factor of six and a factor of 12. But there is a negative sign in front of three. So, yep, I have to find a negative three in each of these terms. So let's do it. What color am I right now? There. Negative three times B cubed. Remember, third power is called cubed plus positive six. The only way to find a positive, I mean a negative three inside positive six is to rewrite positive six as negative three times negative two. Okay. So that's what I'm about to do. And I don't want to forget my B. And I'm going to write down my invisible plus sign here. Negative 12. I know that positive 12 is three times four. So negative 12 can be negative three times positive four. There. And now I have a negative three in each term that I can pull out as a GCF. So negative three and negative three, and negative three. That's my GCF. So I'm going to write down negative three in front, making it very obvious that it's a GCF. Okay, now after I do that, look, I've got other stuff in each of these terms and I, I want to be able to see it. So I don't want the negative threes getting in the way. So now I'm going to mark them out. And that will help me write my leftovers correctly. There's a B cubed here. Plus negative two B. That'll be minus 2B plus 4. And that should be my answer. I would have loved to have pulled out a B, by the way, but this term doesn't have one, so there you go. All right, now I'm going to check my work. Check. Negative three times B to the third minus two B plus four. I'm going to distribute negative three, I'm, which means I'm just going to multiply it by each of these three terms. So negative three times b to the third is negative three b cubed. And negative three times negative two b is positive six b. And negative three times positive four is negative 12, which is minus 12. So if this is what I started with, 
and it is, then 95% likely that that's the correct answer. Okay. See, that's a little more strenuous there. It takes really slowing down. For me, it takes really slowing down and focusing. We're going to do it again. This one's easier. I should have done that one first. I think it's easier. Maybe there's something tricky about it. This is also a negative three. What was this? That was a negative three, wasn't it? This is a negative three. So let me rewrite the terms first. Now, this is degree two and this is degree one. Right, we talked about that. Um, yes, because you had a review of polynomials. Um, okay, yes. So this is the leading term and negative three is the leading coefficient and it's negative. So there goes all our fun. But notice that both terms have a Y, so I can pull out a Y also. So this is negative three times Y times Y plus to get positive 30, to get a negative three, I need to multiply negative 3 times negative 10. That's positive 30. So negative 3 times negative 10. Why? Cool, cool beans. Each term has a negative 3 and a Y. I just prefer circling things. It's not as neat, but it's me. Negative 3y, that's my GCF. All right, now I'm going to mark through negative 3y so there, 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 so that I can see my leftovers clearly. All right, there's a Y here. And there's a negative 10 here. So we'll have Y plus negative 10, which is minus 10. And this should be my answer if when I check it, I get back what I started with. Negative 3y times y is negative 3y squared. And negative 3y times negative 10 is positive 30y. And that is what I started with. So this is my answer. See, this tells me what was originally multiplied together to get negative 3y squared plus 30y. Why do you need to know? You really do, and pretty soon you'll see. Oh, and one more, and then we'll talk about it, if you want to. Okay, making sure. Yeah, this one. If you factored before, you're going to look at this a while and try to figure out a way that you can get a fancier answer, but this is not a fancy answer deal. 
This is a very basic answer deal. <clears throat> Here's the leading term. I guess we could call it the LT. And negative one is the coefficient of the leading term, so it's the leading coefficient. And in fact, we might as well make our other ones. Well, that has a one, and there's no need to do the others. Ah, but there will be. Okay, so let me rewrite this first, because this actually is kind of not tricky, but tricky. Okay, it's tricky. Now I'm going to leave it this way for a minute, and then you're going to see I have to change it. Okay, here is the leading coefficient and it's a negative one. I'm going to have to actually pull out a negative one from each term. Now that's easy here and here, it's already there. But here and here, I'm gonna have to work a little bit to figure this out. All right, I've got negative three. I can make a negative one appear if I do this. Negative three can be written as negative one times positive three. That's right. Negative one times three is negative three. Okay, now positive 12. And I need a negative one. That's the hard part. That would be negative one times negative 12. Okay, so now I've got my negative one, but I had to stop and think about it. Negative one times S to the fourth power plus negative one times S to the third power plus parentheses negative one times three times s squared plus negative one times negative 12. So I'm going to circle, what color should I use? So let's go back to blue. Got a negative one in that term, and a negative one in this term, and a negative one in this term, and a negative one in this term. So negative one is going to be my GCF. I'm just writing that for your benefit. When you put your answer in the answer box, you're not gonna be writing GCF. Okay, now, I don't really need it that long. Okay, my leftover here, let me, okay, 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 okay. My leftover here is S to the fourth. And my leftover here is S to the third. And my leftover here is 3s squared. And my leftover here is plus a negative 12, so minus 12. Now let me check and see if I get back what I started with. Negative one times S to the fourth 
is negative s to the fourth. Negative one times s to the third is minus s to the third. Negative one times positive three s squared is minus three s squared. And negative one times negative 12 is positive or plus 12. Now, is that what I started with long ago? So yeah, negative s to the fourth, minus s to the third, minus three s squared, plus 12. Yes, it is. So this is factoring out a common factor. These one, two, three, four, five problems. The first five problems are factoring by GCF. The first three, no, the first two have a positive GCF but the last three make you factor out a negative GCF. Discussion. Kind of awe-inspiring, isn't it? Okay, now, whenever you see a four-term polynomial, the odds are in favor of the uh, instruction saying factor. And there's a certain, <laughs> yeah, Factor by grouping, you are starting to play with the big dogs. Okay, this is more complicated than just plain old factoring. But if you follow the steps, follow the rules, it'll be okay. So I'm going to do this like three or four times for you. And so I'm going to do exactly the same steps. <clears throat> How do I do this? Well, I write it. R to the third minus four R squared plus nine R minus 36. The first step of grouping is to put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms and make sure that you have a plus in the middle. Now that was fun. Okay, now, now what we're going to do is this. You factor the first two terms by GCF. That is, you factor the terms in the first set of parentheses by GCF, and you factor the terms in the second set of parentheses by GCF. So, R to the third power is R times R times R minus 4R times R. That's what the second term is. Plus in the middle, not included with either set of parentheses. Now your leading coefficient is 9, and you that doesn't mean you have to find a nine over here, but life is more convenient when you do. Um, 
there's a nine in both of these, so nine will be the GCF. Nine R minus four times nine. Okay. Now, back to the start here. Both of these terms have two R's. That is R times R, R squared. So R squared is your GCF. R squared. Then I'm going to mark through my RR's. My leftover in the first term is one, well, it's an R. Just one of them. And then I've got a minus four. And now I'm done with the first two terms. Copy my plus sign. Nine is my GCF here. So I write it down. Oop, blue, I write it down. Then I mark it out. Parentheses. R minus four. That's what I've got so far. I'm not finished yet. Here I've got R squared multiplied by parentheses R minus four. That is, I have a monomial times a binomial. Remember when we talked about polynomials, we said that a term consists of numbers and letters that are multiplied together. Here you've got two things that are multiplied together, R squared and R minus four. That makes this a term. Put green there, a term. This is one term. Same thing here. You've got this number, which is a monomial times a binomial R minus four. You've got two things that are multiplied together. So you've got a term. Now you've got a term plus a term. And each of these terms contains R minus four. R minus four in parentheses is now your GCF. So I don't want to write it in blue, but take my word for it. Here it is, R minus four. Here it is, R minus four. It is now the GCF. Well, okay. R minus four. Now I'm going to mark through R minus four. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. It just, I find it helpful personally. R squared is my leftover in the first term. Plus nine is my leftover in the second term. And I'm done. If I multiply these two binomials together, I'll get this four term polynomial. Kind of like they're the mommy and the daddy. So let's do it and make sure. Let's check. And I've got plenty of room to check. I multiply them back together. That's how I check. So I'm going to have R times 
times r squared plus nine minus four times r squared plus nine. And then I distribute the r into there and there, and I distribute the minus four into here and here, and this is what I get. r to the third plus nine r minus four r squared minus 36. Mm, so I need to rewrite this in descending order. So r to the third, remember there's an invisible plus sign here and here. And any time you add, you can move your terms around. So I can put my minus four r squared here and my plus nine R here, and my minus 36 here. And then I can look and see if that is what I started with. R to the third minus four R squared plus nine R minus 36, and the answer is yes, yes. There you go. Factoring by grouping. So here's the method again. One. Yeah, we've got time. One. I'm not going to do this for every problem. Put parentheses around right. <laughs> right parentheses. I'm going to say parens. But please know that when you see the word parens, it means parentheses. Write parens around the first two terms. First two terms. And around the second two terms. Two, make sure you've got a plus in the middle. I'll say a plus between the parentheses, between the sets of parentheses. That's really making it complicated. How about a plus in the middle? Okay, three. Um, okay, okay, all right. So, factor the first set of parentheses by GCF, or I could say factor each set of parentheses by GCF. Your leftovers should match. That is this and this. That R minus four and R minus four should be exactly the same.
in parentheses. That's not parentheses. Quotation marks. The leftovers, <clears throat> but I was going to write in parentheses, in parens, should be exactly alike. No, I'm erasing that. I'm going to continue number four. Should be exactly alike. <sighs> Semicolon, they are now the GCF. Five, write down the GCF and then the leftovers. Hi, so I noticed um, some of the problems, ones that match when it come to the answer, they come first. And some yep. of them, sometimes the leftovers come first in terms of the answers. You know, it'd be leftovers, then the ones that match, or the ones that match, then the leftovers. Um, Why is that? It's just the way it's taught. Um, but let's look at this. If you write r minus 4 times r squared plus 9, that's exactly the same as r squared plus 9 times r minus 4. Order doesn't matter when you multiply. Order doesn't matter when you add or when you multiply. I'll prove it to you. How about 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6. Well, so is 2 times 3. It doesn't matter what the order is. Does that help? I hope it does. I think so. Okay, good. Order doesn't matter when you multiply. Let me write that down. That was a good question. There are almost no bad questions, except maybe what did you eat for breakfast or something? Order doesn't matter when you multiply. Or add. Okay, good. More questions. Okay, now we're going to do one that's, well, you'll see. I'm going to follow exactly the steps that I wrote down. I'm going to put parentheses around the two, first two terms. and parentheses around the second two terms. And make sure there's a plus in the middle like that. So do that if you're writing it out with me.
Okay, now I'm going to factor the first two terms here in the first set of parentheses by GCF. Now let me show you something here. Well, you'll see. Both of these terms contain two y's, right? Y times y, which is y squared. So that's your GCF for your first set of parentheses. Now, if I mark through the y times y, I'll have leftovers of 2y for the first term and plus it's gone. But it's not really gone. It's pretending to be gone. Oh, come on. Messing with me. Y times Y can always be written as Y times Y times 1. So your leftover is 1. Don't put a zero. That would get the problem totally wrong for you. Don't do that. But yeah, y times y went away, but it was really y times y times one. So you can always use one as a GCF, always. Because it's always there. You write anything, you write a V. Well, it's one times V. You write a five. Well, it's five times one. One is one of those wonderful numbers. One is wonderful. Okay, now, now comes the harder part. Let me make this bigger. Your leading term is negative. That means your GCF has to be negative. So, I know that negative 6 breaks down into negative 3 times 2. That's negative 6. So, negative 3 times 2y plus negative 3 times 1. Because, let me write it up here, negative 6y can be written as negative 3 times positive two times y, and negative three can be written as negative three times one. Of course, there's always a one. So our, our, uh, our GCF is negative three. So I'm going to come out here and write down my negative 3 GCF and then write the leftovers. <gasps> no, I lied to you. Negative 3, oh, is negative 3 times positive 1. You're right. Never mind. I was right. Barb, you were right. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna, negative six, negative three. Yes. Okay. Now, we have two y plus one and two y plus one, and they match. Thank goodness. I'm going to write it down here because I wrote too big. I wrote that too big. 2y plus 1 is now our GCF. And you'll have y squared minus 3. But 
if you wrote it as y squared minus 3 times 2y plus 1, that would also be correct. So, I suppose as good people, we should check our answers, but I'm running out of time, so I will let you check the answer. And I'm going to go on to the next one. And here we have the same kind of problem. We're going to have x to the third plus 5x squared. See, those first two numbers are always easy. Plus negative 3x minus 15. So over here, x times x times x plus 5 times x times x. And both terms here have x times x in them. So x squared is my GCF. And then the leftovers are, especially if you mark through it, then you see it better, maybe, x plus 5. All right, now, negative 3 is the leading coefficient. That means you're going to have to pull out a negative number. So, um, I've already got an X there, but negative 15, if I want to be sure to have a negative 3 in it, I'm going to need to multiply by positive 5, because negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. So, this will be negative 3 times x plus negative 3 times positive 5. And I, you don't have to circle these, it's just, I do it. I'm going to write down negative 3. Oh, and I'm going to mark through the negative threes. My left over here is X and my left over here is positive five. So I'll have X plus five. Now the X plus five and the X plus five match, which is kind of a check. And the leftovers are x squared plus negative 3, which is minus 3. So the more you do it, the less hard it is. But you've got to practice it. I think you should practice each one of these twice, personally. You know, you can do that by choosing, after you're done with a problem, choose similar problem. And then you can always keep going back into the homework. Let's see. Yes, we have more. But they're basically the same as these. So, let me make these pages smaller. Do 
you want to talk about these or about the GCF problems? If not, I'll just keep working on them. Okay. But I'm glad. I am just super cool glad to talk with you. Never mind. Okay, look at this. Man, we have a GCF for all four terms that we have to pull out before we can start factoring by grouping. So let's see what it is. I know that 12 goes into 36 and into 60, but not into 20. So that kind of messes that up. Um, on the other hand, 4 goes into all of these numbers. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 36 divided by 4 is 9, and negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5, and 60 divided by 4, well, negative 60, okay. Divided by 4 is negative 15. So we can pull out a 4 GCF. Can I pull out any A's? No, I can't, because that one doesn't have it. Doggone it. Okay, but this we're going to pull out of all four terms, and that will make the number smaller, which will make life much easier for us at least a little easier. All right, so let's put a four down there. And then I'm gonna put brackets because you know I'm gonna be to put, well, you'll see. So this is gonna be three A to the third. That wasn't the right way to do it though, was it? Should have just written it out. Okay, now. 4 times 3 times A times A times A plus 4 times 9 times A minus 5 times 4 times A times A minus 15 times 4. So, I'll circle the 4 and the 4 and the 4 and the 4. Notice the leading term, which is the number in front of the highest degree term, is positive, so we don't have to have this GCF be negative. Thank goodness. So, I'm going to write it down. and then mark through the fours. And then make a bracket. And my leftovers are 3a to the third plus 9a plus, whoop, whoop, and parentheses, parentheses, negative, 5a squared minus 50. And then a bracket. Okay, well. Each of these terms has a 3, and each of these terms has an a. So you could kind of come under here and go, 3a a a plus 3 times 3 times a and you can see that a 3 and an a 
is in both terms. So 3A is my GCF for the first set of parentheses. And then I mark through the three A's. And I'm left with A times A, which is A squared, plus three. Okay, now, Here's the leading term of th these two, and uh, the leading coefficient is negative, so. Negative 15 again has got to give me a negative five, which means I've got to multiply the negative five by a positive three in order to get the negative 15. And something I did not do was to put in the invisible plus sign, which always helps, especially when you get down here. Okay. Now I have a negative five and a negative five. I'm gonna move that out here, do it in one step, and then mark through the negative fives. Now, um, I do have to take another step though. There's no reason to scrunch everything together. 3a times a squared plus 3 plus 5. And the leftovers here are a squared plus positive 3. Okay, doggone. These guys match, isn't that wonderful? Makes me pretty happy. All right, so we're going to have four. A squared plus three. Now I'll mark through that, mark through that. And my leftovers are 3a plus 5. Now with everything multiplied, I've got this times this, and then times this. That is, they're 1, 2, 3 all multiplied together. I don't need these brackets anymore at all. 4 times a squared plus 3 times 3a three plus 5. Let me make that 2 a little neater. There. Okay, let me put this in my little blue box. So see, it's all the same steps. It's nothing that's real interesting, except if there is a GCF for all four terms, you've got to pull that out first. Just the way life is. And then finally, as long as we have time, let me point this out to you because it's going to become important tomorrow, maybe. You've got, well, yeah, you do. You've got 7v to the fourth right here. 
and you've got minus eight over here. But look at it, these two terms are like terms. They could be combined into 26V squared. They could be. Is that right? Yeah, it is. 28 minus 2 is 26. So why on earth did these people do that? Because you can't factor that by grouping. Is it necessary? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Oh, Barbara, gee, Wellikers. Okay. Plus 28 V squared minus 2 V squared. And now I can put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and strive to get my little plus sign in there. Do not forget your plus sign because it'll ruin everything. You'll think you're multiplying and you'll get all the wrong answers. I've seen it too many times. So anyway, here we are. We're going to have 7V squared plus 7 times 4. Ah, that's the 4. See, I'm moving too fast. You're going to do this now just like you did it before, but I am trying to do it too fast. So I'll continue slowly. And since you've only got four minutes for class to be over, you can go ahead and go now or you can stay, but I'm going to slow down so I don't make a mistake on this. So if you're leaving now, bye bye. And if you're not leaving now, well, good. Either way, whatever you want. All right, I've got to write negative eight so that it has a negative two. So negative two times positive four. Now, each of these terms has a 7 and a V and a V. So 7V squared is going to be my GCF there for the first set of parentheses. plus four. And it probably would have been better if I had marked these out, but it's not absolutely necessary if you don't need to. Now, the GCF of these two terms is going to be negative two. So we'll have negative two parentheses v squared plus 4. So this is what I have now, and I see that v squared plus 4 is going to be the GCF now, so I write it down. And then the second set of parentheses, so boom, boom, I write the leftovers which are 7v squared plus negative 2, which is minus 2. Okay, let me check the one above this, make sure I used a minus. Look at that. 
I lost my minus sign. Negative, negative. Everybody who's here, go back and put a negative in front of their five because that was the GCF. This part's right, a squared plus three. So that was the mistake there. And so it only affects this. So that wasn't one of the worst mistakes in the world. And if I had checked, I would have caught it and corrected it. So that's another good reason. Well, that's pretty cool. That's another good reason to always check your work. Don't assume it's right. Good, I did do it there. Yeah, I just suddenly couldn't remember writing the minus sign. Guess what? I didn't, but now I did. OK, is that it? Yes, that is it for today. All of you go have fun factoring. You've got to learn how to do this. Do it now. Do it today. Do it tonight. Because tomorrow, I think. We're going to be factoring by the AC method. I'm not sure, but I think we are. So um, you need to already know how to factor four terms.